<laughs> completely to my next guest, who was a Beatles fan way back when they played in the Cavern. And before Ringo joined the group, Pete Price is himself a Liverpool legend. He spent his youth at the Cavern Club where the Beatles story started. Um, do you remember hearing Love, Love Me Do for the first oh, time? Oh, I do indeed. I do indeed. We were against it being a hit, you know. Mm. We didn't want to lose the Beatles. We wanted to keep them to ourselves. We knew something was going to happen. I mean, I used to uh, go from school uh, to the cavern, and it, it, it's an amazing place. People, hundreds would queue to get in, into this ridiculous doorway, down some solid stone stairs, past Paddy the doorman, which, by the way, was totally illegal today with health and safety. Sure. Get inside, and you'd see them, and it would tap, tap, tap on the mic, and they were on. I first saw the Beatles at the YMCA in Hoylake on a Wednesday evening, which was one and six in old money to see them. We loved them. We how, loved how old were you when you first saw the Beatles? 16. Uh, oh, I'd be about 15. But mm. sort of 16, 15, that was the sort of age. You, and... you're, you're ahead of your time. Were you, were you playing music yourself? No, 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 no. I was a fan. No, I wasn't in, even in the industry then. Um, I was going to Catering College and didn't even know I'd go into the, the business. But uh, ev eventually got to know the Beatles, which was tremendous. And Cella Black was on the cloakroom. Um, taking your coats, which was great. But Sherry Marsden was bigger than the Beatles years ago, before the Beatles. But then when Love Me Do came out, it was the rawness of the song. It was just totally amazing. And then they went on to... Uh, they're showing some terrible photos of me. I was, would you say, a fashion icon? That, by the way, is on the front page of the Daily Sketch before it went bankrupt. That, uh, that me and Hot Pants. Uh, is, well, that, that one's better. That's, that's a bit better. Yeah, I've got some clothes on. But uh, what was amazing... And, and then, because they were getting so big, when Pete Best left, we marched. We, we were outraged at Ringo Starr coming in. We wanted Pete Best to say, so that's how long ago it was. I might just say, we showed on the screen just then your membership card of the... The Cavern, um, yeah. Your 1963 membership yep. card, yep. which is obviously a, a very relevant date. But Love, Love Me Do, I think, was first performed way back in the 50s, is that right? It was, it was. It, 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 when, they did, when they did their music, they were trying to find themselves and which direction they were going in. And, of course, the Cavern in particular was this cellar that had the strangest vibe inside it. And, and it was the rawness. And we thought, how could they ever capture that onto record? It would be difficult. Um, years later, I went on uh, to the Seychelles to work and had this amazing idea, wrote a letter to the Liverpool Echo saying, I think we should have a statue to the Beatles. Came back and it had exploded beyond belief. Mm. In the end, I decided to do it myself and I raised the money and went to Arthur Dooley, who is sadly not with us anymore, and there is a statue in uh, Matthew Street, opposite the cavern, which I raised the money for. Well, well done. And also, the airport in Liverpool is named John Lennon. Is yep, it, not? it is indeed. And I believe it's certainly the only uh, airport in Europe that is named after a musician. Yep. Just tell us a bit about the atmosphere. Um, you, you said you went into catering. What did you eat or drink in the cavern? Oh, <laughs> right. So you'd go down the stone stairs. It was very... Because we used to wear jumpers with our CND badge and our college scarf. And you'd go down and you'd, first of all, have a bowl of soup. You'd have to have it very, very quickly before the sweat came down off the walls. A you'd have bowl to use of soup. Of soup. A bowl of tomato soup. That's all you could afford after you paid one or six to get in. And then you'd have to use the toilet before it flooded over. It was a dreadful place, but it was a fantastic place. What people today don't see and what they've never seen is the rawness of the whole Mersey Beat music. I've got all my Mersey Beat magazines. I'd love to have brought them down with me, but they're bright yellow. They're all individually packed. It was... We had the big three. We had Scylla. We had Jerry Marsden. We had the, uh, the Escorts. We had so many bands all emulating and singing around the Beatles. Tell, tell me what was happening within the music in those early days. I mean, they're sort of... They're singing to each other, aren't they? They're, they're, they're very united in those early days, that Please Please Me album. Yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was, well, you see, Brian Epstein instilled in this, and we've got a new statue to Brian, which has just been put up a couple of weeks ago. Brian Epstein knew what he wanted from them. He saw the rawness of them, and 
I, I think it would be great if musicians these days could go back to that way because they were singing to the, each other, mm. but they were also conscious of the audience and they always played to us, always played to us. They were tremendous. I got very friendly with Jim, uh, Paul's dad, and uh, didn't meet Paul for a long time until the Red Rose tour. And then one day I was at Jim's house, uh, went in for a coffee, the little girl. Didn't know it was Stella. And I said, you're a nice little girl. Who do you belong to? And this guy went, actually me. And he went, hi, Paul. Mm. Hi, Paul. <laughs> it was great. And all that, he still kept the house in Heswell. All the Japanese visitors go up to see the house, which is still there. But what was great, they never forgot the fans. But when you went to the Empire, when they became huge, you went to the Empire, you couldn't hear any music because the screaming was unmerciful, unmerciful. It was terrible. Uh, we, we saw that in, in that clip just now. Yeah. I was thinking we might see another clip at a moment. We might look at a clip of them um, singing Help. I, I particularly like to see this because I think the photography is absolutely fantastic. Can we see that, that little clip of Help? Ah, uh, we haven't got it, unfortunately. I, I said before that they were singing to each other. Yeah. Uh, and I, I said that because there's a poignancy about it, because in the end, as we know, they fall out. Uh, why? And is it is it inevitable in your experience? Yes, it is inevitable. I, and I, why? Well, I've been in show business for 50 years, so I've, I've worked with some of the great names, uh, especially the ones from the past. It's a marriage. It's passion. With my radio show that I had for 40 years, I had two different di uh, producers because we were passionate about what we were doing. So the music from the Beatles was... They were passionate. They all were individual. They all had their own style. George was amazing. Ringo, not my favourite because I love Pete Best, uh, <laughs> Paul and John, that passion with music. Um, so it's like a marriage. A marriage has to end. And there was a couple of ladies that were blamed for breaking the Beatles up, mm -hmm. as in Yoko and Linda. And maybe, uh, Pete, uh, a one-word answer on this one. How do you feel about Liverpool getting the Eurovision Song Contest? I can't tell you how happy I am. It's going to be the greatest ever. We are so excited. More than one word, sorry. <laughs> Very good words indeed. Uh, thanks to Pete Price. Uh,